this this movie is a is such a fun wild ride in that it's funny as 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 watching it, it felt as a comic fan it felt like something that you read in issues mm. right? issue after issue after issue and then you know you know towards the end of the arc you're going to get your your big climax how important was pacing of this movie I, for you really important yeah i i, I described it as um a great rock and roll song, mm -hmm. Stairway to Heaven or something. This kind of slow build, the movie's a slow burn and it right. builds to something, mm -hmm. the way great old rock songs of that same era, by the way, yep. you know, uh, uh, did. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I mean, the, 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 the slow burn of it is intentional. And mm -hmm. it's like, right. ha, you know, the movie's unsettling intentionally mm -hmm. and it's, it's meant to sort of be that pace, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Pace in every movie is really important and right. always really intentional. Uh, I know you had mentioned at one point that your first cut for this movie was about two and a half, uh, two and a half. Well, at least, yeah. 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 Was it? Were you spending more time? Because I feel like there's, you know, as uh, Arthur, you know, grows and stuff, that you can spend a bit more time with really any of, you know, any yeah. of them. Was there? Was there more, you know, devotion to a certain aspect? No, uh, Arthur I mean, is that, or was it just sort it of? It was a kind of overall thing. I mean, I, that that uh, is always, you know, it's not that we, uh, uh, that's what movies are, right? You right. Know, you do your first cut. I think it was two thirty-five, and you look at it and you watch it a few times, and you go, oh, we don't really need that. We don't need this. But it wasn't. There's not one. There's not like a plot line we took sure. out. It's just like an overall trimming the fat. Mm -hmm. I tend to like my movies tighter mm -hmm. than you know even the the comedies. They were never over. 100 minutes I think right. you know I, I just tend to like to move things along um, but I'm glad you're still getting it's a slow burn so imagine yeah. the slow burn it wasn't <laughs> right. so maybe we made the right choice I, I got I have to ask you about the music yeah because holy, it is such a to me it feels it's a it's a character in and of itself so I agree. It, through we, this we always saw it as that uh, it almost feels like that was part of the score written before yeah I mean maybe you read started that. so so I've never done this before. I watched, uh, we were writing the script. I went and saw Sicario 2 because I love that movie. Right. And uh, Stefano Salim is one of my favorite directors. Uh -huh. Anyway, I went and saw Sicario 2 and I'm listening to the score and it just really moved me. And um, I was like, who did this score? And it's this woman, Hilda Gudenitor. Mm -hmm. And I wrote her an email. I got her information. I wrote her an email and I said, hey, I'm doing, I'm going to start this movie. And uh, I go, I go, I'd like to do something weird. I want to just send you the script. And I just want you to start writing music. So she wrote music from the script. Not, you know, normally a composer, mm -hmm. they see the scene and they right. write a score. She was writing it from the script and we were listening to it on the set all the time. That's awesome. I mean, when Joaquin's walking up the stairs, mm -hmm. like for example, yeah. I got a huge speaker at the bottom of the stairs That's playing, playing the music. Or we had something in his ear playing right. the music. And it was in my ears too, and the camera operator's ears. We were just like letting that music live with us. That's fantastic. And it was all through the shooting. I cool. mean, it's crazy. I've got uh, two more quick questions for you. Yeah. One, I mean, obviously, we're comic book.com. There's a ton of uh, Bruce Wayne lore, you know, DC history lore that's sprinkled, you know, sort of throughout. How do you, how did you balance that? How much, you know, was that just the right amount? Was there more? Did you? Did there was probably a little more in earlier cuts, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, there definitely was a little more of everything in the earlier cuts, but it was really about how fun it is that we get to keep kind of one foot in the comic book world and one foot not. Mm -hmm. And and like you say, find that balance. Um, it, it, it's hard to quantify how we found that balance, but but it was, um, the movie's very liberating because DC, just speaking about comic books, yeah. DC as a company and Warner Brothers as a studio really let us just do whatever we wanted with it. There right. wasn't like, oh, and if you, you have to mention the Batmobile and you have to, none of that. Mm -hmm. It was literally like, yeah, if we're gonna take this leap on this movie, this is them speaking, just go for it and mm. do it. That's awesome. There's a uh, this movie leaves you asking a lot of questions, mm -hmm. which is great. And so uh, I have to ask uh, this question: uh, Is could this could Arthur Fleck, <laughs> if that if this Bruce Wayne inevitably grows up to end up being Batman, <laughs> could Arthur Fleck take on that Bruce Wayne? Uh, you mean in in, in, in comic books? I don't uh, no, know. We have let's, no, no. Right. Let's say like, right. We, let's say as you know, time went on. You know, right. time went on. Right. Could the two could the two face off, and would he win, or is, or is it someone who he just gets inspired by? Uh, yeah, I, I, we, we, this movie just stands on its own. Yeah. I don't see that Arthur Fleck fighting anybody. 